motioned me to roll my window down. So I uh, motioned him to pull off to the shoulder of the road. When I got out of the car, the driver came out kind of excited, waving his arms and uh, screaming something to the fact that uh, his buddy or the passenger was bitten by a cobra. I saw the victim slumped over and the blood running down his leg and that I figured the time was of essence. Florida Highway Patrol Officer Jim Carr headed for the nearest hospital. I then notified the station that I had a snake bite victim that had been bit by a cobra and that they needed to tell the hospital, Baptist ER, that, that I had somebody coming in so they could prepare for him. I reached speeds right in the area of 100, 110 miles an hour. It allowed me to get to the Baptist in right around the area of three minutes. I know that you get bit by a cobra, you don't have a whole lot of time to deal with. He was still conscious at the time, but uh, as I was carrying him in, he said that uh, he was getting a little lightheaded. You got a snake bite. <clears throat> okay, I'll get that for Brandon. What kind of snake was it? It's a cobra. We'll see if we have the evidence. Uh, he lifted up the leaves on him. Yeah, he told us. Give me two kind of snake tubes? that he was bitten by, and we realized that we had a, a problem. This particular antivenom for an Asian cobra isn't kept available in the hospital because it's used so rarely. Okay, get the innovation tray ready. Uh, Emergency yeah. room doctor Larry Branham had never treated a cobra bite before. I was changing the water bowl in his cage. I, I keep him. When did it happen? Uh, about 20 ago? minutes ago. Uh, the fact that he was so sick so soon after being bitten meant to me that he had had a rather severe bite. And this really caused a lot of concern because this particular type of snake has a neurotoxin, basically, that can paralyze a person. He could stop breathing, his heart could stop, and I knew that right at the particular time there was not a lot we could do for him. That may have this antivenom. The nursing staff and people at the desk began to make phone calls to try and obtain some type of antivenom that we could use, and no one actually could agree on the type of antivenom that we needed. Do you recognize your mother? Yeah. He was seen double. He was shaking a little bit. He was slowly losing consciousness. He looked like he was dying. There was just a lot of things going through my head. How do we get him to this age and then all of a sudden this happens to him? Grant asked them to contact his friend, snake expert Joe Wasilewski. Joe brought some anti-venin he thought would work to the hospital. Poor Grant must have been scared half to death just by the vibrations of everyone coming on around him. Hey, Grant, I'm here. I, so I went in there as calm as I can be, and, and, and I just wanted to give him some confidence, and Grant seemed relieved. I've been through all that you're talking about. To see one of your friends in, in such a condition is, is scary. Okay, I'm going to go talk to the doctor. Okay. The antivenom that he brought in was a South African cobra antivenom, the snake that had had bitten Grant was a was an Asian cobra. If you used the wrong type of antivenom and you then wanted to re-inject him with a different type of antivenom, he may be sensitive to that and may have a full-blown allergic reaction. It'll work for that cobra. I know yeah. that the snake he has is, is an Asian cobra. With only one chance to save Grant's life with antivenom, Dr. Branham was reluctant to use the wrong kind. I don't, I don't know. Can you go get, see if you can get the information? No problem. Okay. I didn't know who he was, didn't know anything about him, so I really didn't know how reputable his information might be. The trip to get the book kind of bothered me because uh, I knew it would take an hour under normal circumstances, and from what I saw, his symptoms were going downhill fast. Stay awake. He Stay awake. was having trouble with his breathing. He was having trouble with his speech, okay. having trouble with seeing even. Once these types of symptoms begin, the the neurotoxin can progress very rapidly, leading to any anything from coma to death. It had been less than two hours since Grant was bitten. I was hoping for the best and expecting the worst. I was praying to God that he would pull Grant through, that he would give him a second chance, that he wouldn't take my, my only son away from me. Let's get another BP on. Around 2 a.m., Joe returned with the snake book. When I showed the book to the doctor, it does say additional venoms neutralized, and it said Asian Cobra, but there was an asterisk 
and I never noticed the asterisk before, but the doctor sure did. And it actually said it may or may not neutralize this venom, and if it does, it may be slight. So the doctor still wasn't convinced that this was the proper serum. When you come right down to it, we really didn't have a choice. We had to try something. We had to do something. And uh, Grant kept telling me, Joe knows what he's doing. So I had talked to his father, and his father went out, and he went ahead and signed the papers, and they started giving them the serum. Nearly three hours had passed. Time was running out. It was frightening to say, yes, use this antivenin that may or may not work. Come on, open your eyes. Mm. You got to stay with me when I'm putting this in you. And the antivenom didn't seem to take effect. Grant was still declining. His pulse was irregular. His fingernails were turning blue, which I was real concerned with. Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. I think we were into approximately the fifth or sixth vial before you could see things started to reverse themselves. By the time he had finished the 100 cc's of anti-venom, he was totally awake. He was still having some blurred vision, but his uh, vital signs and things were okay. The happiest moment of the entire evening was when Grant asked for food. When he said those particular words, I'm hungry, I thought, we got this, this is made, this is it, this is, you know, this is going to be history. And I'm sure you'll be glad to get out of here. It was really a festive time for all, because everybody knew Grant was going to make it. I think we'll all be glad to get out of here. <laughs> Every animal has a little niche in the, uh, in the world. Now let's say we... Kill Joe and I have become very close, of course, through this. We work together now doing shows and lectures. I feel good every time I teach a, a youngster how important animals are to us. Grant still collects snakes, but none that are poisonous. He knows he can't count on being that lucky twice, and he wouldn't want to risk hurting the people who care about him. It's just something that not everybody gets to see. It's you know, how genuine friends and family's love is for you. And you really can't understand that until you do come that close. When it's all over, you look at the things that you've done, like you growl him for not brushing his teeth or not picking up his clothes, and you think, geez, that was minor, you know. Um, I'm just thankful he's alive. Just, just very thankful he's alive. Everybody look up over here. Smile, everybody.